The story begins with a narrative of how the history of the West was always written from the saddle of a horse, but it has never been told from the heart of one. In the 19th century American West, a Mustang colt, Spirit, is born to a herd of wild horses. Spirit has always been a troublemaker growing up and keeps finding himself into a lot of mischief. He eventually grows into a stallion and becomes the leader of the Cameron herd after his late father passed away. As their leader, he upholds protecting the pack even against a wild leopard who once pounced on the young colt. After driving it off, he then led his group to an open plain to stay for the night. One night, he saw some strange lights from a distance and decided to follow them. Spirit finds horses tied to a log and their wranglers sleeping around a campfire. He grew curious and decided to check them out. They later awake and immediately chase after him. When he thought he lost them in the chase, Spirit hears them in the distance. Worried that his herd may get captured, he lures them away towards the canyon. He smirked when he thought he outran them, when he suddenly got roped in by a wrangler waiting for him. He tries to break free, but the others arrive and quickly tie him up. Seeing him on the ground, his mother tried to run to his side, but he urged them to escape. He tries to pull away while being taken, but it was useless. As he couldn't break free, they finally arrive at the U.S. Cavalry Fort. He quickly gets agitated as he sees horses at the human's beck and call, following every order. Seeing him restless, the leader of the fort, the colonel, orders Spirit to be broken. Although it was the first time Spirit saw him, he already knew that he was trouble back then. Before he could be broken, the farrier Murphy tried to trim him, but he bit his hand, so they had to muzzle him. Spirit kicked him down when he tried to clean his hoof, so they had to tie his legs down. Spirit even managed to kick him in the face. When Murphy tries to brand him, Spirit breaks free and headbutts him. Spirit didn't take it lying down, making it quite difficult for him and attacking Murphy every chance he got. His undying fighting spirit and tenacity were so remarkable that they roused even the horses on the stable cheering him on. When it was time to break him, they put a saddle and reins on him. The men then took turns breaking him, but everyone failed to control him. The colonel is so irked at him refusing to break down that he orders his men to have spirit tied up to the post under the scorching sun for three days without food or water. He hopes it will wear him down and make it easier to break his spirit. Meanwhile, a Lakota Native American named Little Creek was captured and brought to the fort after being caught sneaking into a supply wagon. He's tied up to a post beside the stable with Spirit. Before morning, Little Creek calls for help using animal sounds when a knife is suddenly tossed over to him. He quickly grabs it and hides it behind him before the army is up for the morning drills. After three days, the colonel believes Spirit is weak enough that he can finally break him. He quickly takes control of him, boasting that any wild horse can be tamed. Seeing the disappointment in the other captive horses, Spirit musters the energy to throw the colonel off him. Absolutely humiliated in front of his men, the colonel walks up to Spirit and points his gun at him. Little Creek breaks free from his bonds and saves Spirit when he's about to shoot him. Together, they escape the fort while releasing the other horses in the process. When he thinks he can finally return home, Little Creek's horse, Rain, shows up, and Spirit is caught again and taken to his village. After returning to Lakota Village, Spirit is placed in a pen with Rain, hoping it will make him comfortable. When he wakes up in the morning, he finds a pile of apples laid out for him while Rain is out on the pasture feeding on grass. Spirit was immediately mesmerized when he first saw Rain that he invited her for a run. But she ignored him. When he sees Rain being petted by Little Creek, he's confused about her attachment to the human. Little Creek tries to tame Spirit by gaining his trust with kindness, but he refuses to be broken. He decides to tie Spirit to his mare Rain, hoping that it would discipline him and gain his trust with him. Spirit tries to run free the minute he gets out, but Rain weighs him down until he gets weary. When he finally calms down, Rain walks with him into the village to see what kind of people they are and how horses are being treated. Spirit eventually falls in love with Rain, still not understanding her attachment to the humans. He soon gets torn between wanting to return home and staying in the village with Rain. Soon Little Creek and Spirit come to a mutual respect and the former realizes that the horse will never be tamed. 
so he lets Spirit go. Spirit is so excited to finally get the chance to return home that he convinces Rain to go with him. But she refuses to leave Little Creek and the village that is cared for her. Out of nowhere, they hear gunshots from a distance and see the Colonel and his men charging to attack the village. They quickly run back to the village to help. Rain runs to Little Creek who confronts the Colonel, but he shoots at them, to which Rain falls into the river. The Colonel was then about to shoot Little Creek, barely hanging onto a rock. But Spirit knocked him off his horse, deflecting the shot and saving Little Creek. Spirit then runs after Rain, and in an attempt to rescue her, he fearlessly jumps into the waters to carry her back ashore. Still, the current was too strong, and they plummeted over a waterfall. Spirit later finds Rain washed ashore, weakened by the shot, and from falling into a waterfall that he stayed by her side, unable to move her. A cavalry walks by, and Spirit tries to protect Rain, but they recapture him leaving Rain dead, claiming it wouldn't survive. Little Creek then finds Rain after the men go and tend to her injuries. As Spirit is being taken away, Little Creek vows to free him in return for saving his life and take the long walk following the railroad. Broken after losing Rain, Spirit is put on a train with the other captured horses from the village. They tried to cheer him up, but he became more depressed. In his despair, he suddenly sees a vision of his family running free, and he gets the courage to stand up again and reclaim his freedom. Spirit and the other captive horses are forced to work on the Transcontinental Railroad. When the railroad gets blocked after hitting a bedrock, the humans decide to use the horses to pull a steam locomotive over the mountain. As they slowly cart off the steamer, Spirit realizes that their destination leads them back to his home. Worried that his family would get caught and share the same fate he does, Spirit decides to derail their plan. He pretended to faint, and when they removed him, he quickly broke free from the sledge and freed the other horses. As the horses escape, the locomotive starts to tumble down the hill. The humans tried to stop it, but it was too heavy so they decided to let it go. It quickly crashes into the station and collides with another locomotive, causing an explosion that sets the forest ablaze. Spirit runs for his life when he suddenly gets trapped in the chain around his neck as it snags on a fallen tree. He tries to break free, but it's useless when Little Creek shows up to help him. Together, they escape from the men chasing and shooting at them by jumping into a ravine. When Spirit came around, he found some apples laid out for him and Little Creek by the river washing up. He sneaks up on him and pushes him into the river, not knowing that Little Creek knows and intentionally lets him. Spirit was so overjoyed to see a familiar face that he started galloping around. While sharing a moment, the colonel and his cavalry find them by the river, and a chase ensues. When Little Creek trips and falls, Spirit returns for him and lets him ride on his back, much to Little Creek's surprise. They run toward the Grand Canyon, hoping to lose them in the terrain. Little Creek uses the surroundings to his advantage, and with the help of the horses, they manage to take them out one by one. The colonel and his men catch up to them and get trapped on one side of the gorge. Spirit decides to make the incredible leap to the other side with no way out, much to everyone's shock. The colonel's private aims at them while they catch their breaths, but the colonel is so amazed by his tenacity and bravery that he stops his man from shooting at him, humbly accepting his defeat and leaving them be. Little Creek and Spirit jump, celebrating their victory and winning their freedom as their pursuers walk away. With no one to chase them, they quickly return to Lakota Village and find it slowly rebuilding after the attack. Spirit gets depressed when he thinks of Rain when he suddenly finds her nursed back to health by his people. They're both overjoyed to be reunited after such an ordeal. Realizing her happiness, Little Creek decides to set Rain free to go with Spirit back to his homeland, who then calls the stallion Spirit, who could not be broken. Having grown attached to him, Spirit had to make the hardest goodbye he could ever imagine. Before he departed, Spirit called out to him, rejoicing having met him and winning their freedom against those who wanted to oppress them. As they depart for Cimarron, Spirit and Rain take the long stride back home until he reunites with his herd. Everyone was thrilled to find him back with them, to which his mother welcomed him home. Overjoyed, they run through the plains as free horses with his family. 
the end. Thank you so much for watching, please check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap that bell to be notified about our latest videos. We'll see you next time.